What are you doing to prepare for your IELTS test? There are lots of different ways that you can be preparing. You might be part of an IELTS class, you might be studying online on your own, you might be studying online with us at E2 Language, and you're probably also reading magazines, reading newspapers, watching shows on Netflix, and hopefully you're also listening to podcasts. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. Podcasts for IELTS preparation and better English. First thing is, what is a podcast? Basically, it's a radio show, but on your phone. So think of it like a kind of Netflix, but for audio. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find podcasts, good ones, how to use them for IELTS preparation and just for improving your language in general. And I'll share with you my top 10 podcasts. How to find podcasts. You can access podcasts just by using the browser on your computer, just by Googling them. But of course, the best way to do it is on your phone. If you've got an Apple, you're lucky enough to have a special little app called Podcasts. It's a purple tile, looks like this. If you've got an Android phone, you'll have to download a special podcast player. Stitcher is a free one and probably the most well known, but there are lots of them on the market. Once you've got this app on your phone, simply open it up, type in a podcast, which I'll tell you later, into the search function. In this case, I'm looking for Future Tense, which is a great podcast from ABC Radio National. Then you just click on the tile and you can scroll through and see all the episodes that are there. Click on Details, click on the three dots, and click play next if you want, or of course you can just hit the play button on the left there. If you like the podcast and you wanna catch the newest episodes when they come out, click on the subscribe button. So that's how you find them and how you play them, but how can you use podcasts to both prepare for IELTS and also to just improve your language ability in general? I'm gonna show you eight different ways that they can be useful. Number one, Build your listening stamina. Like all language tests, IELTS is a kind of endurance test as well as a language test. Depending where you take the test, your listening section could be the first thing of the day or it could be the third thing of the day. Either way, it involves you concentrating very carefully for 30 to 40 minutes. It's not a thing that we do very often in the real world these days. Focus on something 100% for that amount of time. Especially if listening is the third thing of the day, you've already spent two hours on the writing and the reading and you're probably mentally fatigued. So use podcasts to build up the amount of time that you can concentrate and the amount of time that you can listen to one thing without losing concentration. So start with a couple of minutes, perhaps a little TED talk and build up and build up until you're comfortable listening to 30 to 40 minutes straight. Now, of course, you can listen to podcasts when you're at the gym, when you're walking, when you're commuting, when you're cleaning the house, but you can also use them when you're sitting at your desk with your pen in study mode. A second way to use podcasts is to use them to focus on overall meaning of audio. And you can do this by listening first. It might be a conversation or a lecture. Then summarize. So actually get your pen or if you're on the computer, type out into a document what you think the people were discussing, what were the main points that they made. And here you may have listened to just 30 seconds, maybe two minutes, maybe up to 10 minutes. Just challenge yourself to write a quick summary. Once you've done that, listen again and check. So you can check by just listening several times or you can use the transcript, which brings me to the third point. Number three, use the transcript. At the end of this video, I'll share some podcasts that come with the transcript and you can use this script, this text in a number of different ways. One, of course, is to check your own summary of what you've heard. Another way is if you struggle with pronunciation, particularly things like chunking, grouping words together or putting chunks of words together, um, sentence stress, word stress, intonation, if that's something that your teacher has told you you need to work on, use the transcript while you listen and try to mimic or shadow read with the speaker. 
Another cool way to use the transcript is to create your own gap fill. And it's pretty easy. I'll show you how to do it. So what you can do is find the website of one of the podcasts I'm going to tell you about. This is All in the Mind, all about workplace bullies. Go down to the transcript, which is here. Either grab the whole transcript or just a chunk of it. Let's take this much. And then go to this website. I've shared the link in the description below. And you simply paste the text in here and you can choose whether you want to make it interactive, if you want clues or no clues. I always like to make it interactive and you can choose how many words to remove. So maybe every fifth word or every tenth word is going to be taken out. You can also select different parts of speech that you want to remove. I'm going to keep it random and that is it. Click on submit and it will remove those words for you. Then simply play the podcast and fill in the gaps. A fourth way to use podcasts is to get used to hearing real English. It's probably no surprise to you that classroom English or textbook English and real English are two completely different things. If you've ever traveled to an English speaking country, you'll know we don't speak like the textbooks speak. So we might say, uh, how's it going? What are you up to? Do you want to grab a cup of coffee, the salvo? Something like that. That kind of language is rarely used in textbooks. But by listening to podcasts, you can start to become accustomed to that real and quite rapid speech. IELTS listening, by the way, is not real English and not quite textbook English. It's in between. So the, the more that you listen to real English, the slower and the easier IELTS listening will sound. Let me show you an example of real English versus IELTS English. This is a snippet from the All in the Mind podcast, and it's about corporate bullying. I think there's two reasons. One is people don't want to personally admit if they've bullied others. And the other category is I think some people who have bullied others don't want to admit it at all to anyone, even themselves, or they may not realise, or they may not acknowledge that they've been a bully. And here's part of a section four from an IELTS test on a similar topic. What is conflict in the workplace? Definitions vary, but I'm taking it to refer to a whole range of behaviours that the victim finds unacceptable, from minor, harmless arguments to, at the opposite extreme, physical violence. Notice how the IELTS speaker was a lot more careful and quite a bit slower than the real life English speaker. Which brings me to my fifth point, which is to vary the speed. Dealing with real life English might be challenging for you, particularly depending on the speaker. Some of them are very, very fast, but your podcast player has a great little feature that can help you to deal with this. Let's listen to part of one of our E2 Talks podcasts. By the way, find the link for that in the description below. I want to show you how you can make the speed faster and also slower. Notice in the bottom left of the screen, it says one X or one times. This means it's normal speed, but I'm going to make it faster and then slower just by tapping on it. You're probably going to need to write this much in order to one get and a half. good score uh, on, on this task. Two. Uh, because, uh, because you're going, going to need that many words to develop the idea. Half speed. Uh, you're going to come, and come up within the essay. So it is really... So obviously that's helpful if you want to slow it down, but it can also be a kind of fun challenge to speed it up. Listen to Jay talking in double time. If you go from that to an IELTS listening test, you're going to feel like it is super slow. So it's a good little hack, I suppose, for your preparation. Number six, build language. So this is a bit of a no brainer, but of course, the more you listen to English, the more you hear it and read the transcript, the more exposure you're going to have to vocabulary and to grammar and structures. And you'll see how we use that vocab and that grammar in a real life context. Here is a quick example from the All in the Mind podcast again. I've just taken a couple of lines from the conversation, but you'll notice how rich it is in vocabulary. 
We've got present perfect here, one of the key things that we have identified. An effective instrument, a nice collocation there. Humiliating, offensive behaviour, more nice vocabulary. Enhance your performance, a great collocation. So even in that tiny bit of script, there is a lot of vocab. If you had to write an essay or talk about bullying or corporate workplace culture, you could bring in some of that vocabulary. Definitely something to go into your vocab book. Number seven, learn something. This applies not just to language learners, but to everybody in general. And as a huge podcast fan myself, uh, this is something that I enjoy. In the podcast app itself, Yes, you can type in the name of a podcast, but you can also just type a topic that you're interested in or a topic, in our case, that we know IELTS is interested in. Something like uh, globalization or genetically modified food or farming or crime. And then you'll see a whole list of different podcast episodes and you can select one that interests you. And number eight, enjoy. There is a podcast on any topic in the world and you can find something educational. You can also find comedy podcasts. You can find interview podcasts. You might want to look up your favorite celebrity. I'm sure that they've been on a podcast too. Podcasts are a great way to spend your time, whether or not you're preparing for a test. So let me share my top 10. I've divided these into podcasts with transcripts and podcasts without transcripts, just to help you if you want to use the transcript for your IELTS preparation. Very difficult to narrow down to only 10, but here we go. Five of them with transcripts. One is All in the Mind. I showed that podcast a couple of times in this video. This is a podcast all about um, psychology, basically all about the brain. Very interesting. Health Report. Now, both of these are from ABC Radio National, which is a great resource for podcasts. Stuff You Should Know. This is a podcast which teaches you stuff you should know. Covers a huge range of topics. This is um, an American podcast, so if you want to get used to the American accent, the first two have usually Aussie accents, although a lot of uh, international guests as well. Fourth one is Six Minute English. This is a specific podcast for people learning English. Obviously it's bite-sized, only six minutes. Each episode is a different topic, comes with transcripts and comes with activities. And of course, we can't forget about TED Talks. Without transcripts, a great one from BBC is Costing the Earth, all about environmental issues. Digital Planet is also from the BBC and looks at technology matters. Big Ideas from ABC Radio National and Future Tense, two great podcasts that deal with technology, science and things to do with the future. And the last one, I'm a little bit biased, but of course I recommend E2 Talks, which is our own podcast here at E2 Language. I hope that was helpful for you and please share with me your favourite podcast in the comments section below. I'm always on the lookout for new stuff. See you in class at e2language.com.